Hey everyone, my name is Root, and we are here. This is going to be week number three of the UBL, and we are up against uh, Automatic and his uh, Nuzleafs, I'll just say. But uh, this is a really, really scary matchup, right? So the matchup isn't great for st like at all, but also he has a Mammoth Swine that just completely uh, can destroy my team. I feel like the way that most draft teams are built, uh, Mammoth Swines are generally built decently well to kind of take them on, but Mammoth Swine alone can do a lot to my team. Uh, he has a very scary Kinkelder, which I do have the Minor Crows in, but I kind of like soft check that, but uh, it's never going to be a great situation. He also has the Tornadus, which is really, really scary. But yeah, you can see what, what he brings. The Mammoth Swine, the Tornadus, Electabuzz, which is really, really scary, but it's deceptively fast at 105, and I had to kind of uh, put that, bring that into account because it is a definite possibility. He does have the Mecha Aggron as well, as well as a Slow King, which is super duper difficult for me, for me to deal with. But... Him leaving behind the Tangrowth and the Aromatisse just on their own. In total, he left behind Kinkelder, Tangrowth, Aromatisse, Drapion, Flygon, Tauros, all of which were huge, huge threats. So there was just a ton, a ton for me to think about. So I'm just going to get into this match, right? And I was actually told by Hera that the first slot in each of the, the team preview slots are going to be the leads. And I was completely mind blown by that. I had no idea. So it does mean that we should lead off with the uh, Mega Camera and the Tornadoes, which honestly I would have never... Uh, remember that fact in all honesty, but um, this is going to be reasonably favorable for, for me. It does um, potentially give me rocks, it does potentially give me a decent first turn hit off, but uh, it also does let him kind of scout me out and potentially go for a U turn. So we'll give him a little bit of initiative, and he's not going to switch into anything that he doesn't really feel comfortable with uh, going into a camera up to with. So uh, I would be surprised if I click turn one rocks, but. At the same time, I kind of just have to feel out what he would want to go for in this situation. Oh yeah, I ended up going for the Toxic. Yeah, so I did um, kind of predict the Slowking to come in. A Slowking is obviously his best switch in. It's always going to be his best switch in to a camera. Um, so I actually don't even believe that I have um, Ground Stab on this. Or no, I, I, don't, I believe I don't have Fire Stab on this thing. I believe I am Toxic, Stealth Rock, Earth Power, and uh, Hidden Power Ice, if I remember correctly. But... Uh, that's going to allow me to get a free Toxic off and a free switch in a Serena. Now, I get burned, which is actually genuinely kind of scary because um, I really did expect the Serena to kind of be able to do some damage to the Mammoth Swine. I am a Yachi Berry Serena with Queenly Majesty in order to prevent him from ice sharding me or doing any kind of craziness in that sense. But I did kind of want to rely on the Serena to be able to get a big uh, Trop Kick out on the, on the Mammoth Swine on the uh, uh, Icicle Crash that will get Yachi'd out. But, uh, obviously, a switch was too scary here, so I knew that I had to, uh, click U-turn here. It gets in my Noivern, which does always outspeed this thing, especially once I find out that this thing has a Fly-Z because of the, um, because of the, of the, uh, uh, Frisk. And I do end up missing an Air Slash, which is super duper fortunate. It would have done neg negligible damage because this thing does quad resist, but... I kind of hard read the fact that he's going to want to go for a uh, Stealth Rock play here, which does allow me to just go straight up for the Z Flamethrower. And I don't quite know how much damage it's going to do. Honestly, I was kind of thinking in my head that this thing could really potentially be max special defense to kind of, you know, check a lot of things, Neuvern included. But, uh, you see, I just do so much damage, and it's because it's a crit. Now, obviously, uh, that's, that's going to put him in a position where a follow-up flamethrower is going to take him out, and it's, and he has no business kind of wanting to preserve this thing anyway, so, it is going to put him in a very unfortunate position. He could have saved this, um, this aggron, but at the same time, it wasn't in a terribly good position to do much against my team anyway, after it took that much, after it would have taken that much damage, crit or not, although, it is definitely, definitely unfortunate. The Electabuzz comes in. I didn't expect it to be Scarfed. I felt like the U-turn was relatively free here. And um, I ended up going into my camera up. I didn't know if this thing would want to have the Hidden Power Water or, or would want to have any type of crazy um, any type of crazy coverage for me. But at the very least, like, like I said, I was confident enough that it wasn't going to be um, Scarfed or anything like that. And we do get confirmation of that. And this interaction does allow me to get very free rocks in this situation uh as the slow king is invited in which it was always going to come in in this situation 
Um, and he actually ends up pulling a double, which is really scary. But I think he knew that my Serena was a very kind of easy play. And obviously, earlier in the match, I would made this same play. So now, I'm we're in a super duper 50-50 mode. Because in my head, I'm thinking, he's he knows that I have to switch out. Um... He's going to take advantage of the fact that I'm going to want to switch out. He's going to click U-turn here. I was very, very certain that he would want to click U-turn here. And I ended up clicking Rapid Spin on this turn. Uh, to uh, Obviously to get rid of the rocks. But I felt safe enough because I was so, so certain that he was going to go for the U-turn. He ends up uh, going for the Flying Z, probably Z Hurricane, uh, if I had to guess. But my heart just sank because um, I really... Honestly, I felt like this was going to be a very free rapid spin first and foremost, but also just uh, giving up my Serena in this way. My best answer to the to the slow king, remember, uh, was really unfortunate, and it was on such an aggressive 50-50. Like I really thought I kind of was able was going to be able to um, win in this interaction, but uh, I go into camera up, which is, an is another play that doesn't quite make sense to me. But I go into camera up and I pull a double. But uh, that, ne that really never made sense because as soon as I had like clicked the, clicked the switch, um, I remembered that he did have U-turn, so he was never going to a uh, hard switch when he has the opportunity to U-turn. I'll do you know even the slightest bit of chip damage in this situation would have been helpful. But now, um, I'm in a bad position where I kind of just have to. Uh, try to attack this Electabuzz, and I know it's not Scarf, so, I'm not, so I know I'm fine there. I, I felt like I could take any single hit, but, um, I go for the Flamethrower, he goes for the Thunderbolt, I, and, and obviously I had to be, like, reasonably certain that this thing wouldn't have any red eyes. It ended up not having it, it doesn't look like. But, um, this is just a very strange series of plays for me, because, um, there's another situation where he knew that he could take hits, and he had no real reason to go for an electric move. Uh, he could have just, like, gone for the Psychic, as you, as you just saw. He did get a crit, but um, that Psychic did allow him to to uh, to AKO my camera up, and it probably would have 2 KO'd my camera up with or without the crit. I, regardless, um, I thought I played in a way that I was playing a way, way too cute in this moment, and uh, it just kind of ended up putting me in an awkward position here. But ultimately, it's going to be fine. It's going to land my Keldeo. Uh, my Keldeo can kind of put on some pressure here with a Splash Plate, Max Special Attack, Sir. Uh, I believe this thing did have to be timid for something. Oh, for the Electabuzz. But um, I was... Uh, once this Slow King comes in, I felt confident enough trying to get up a sub. And as soon as I saw him attack, I was kind of concerned because I didn't know whether or not the Shadow Ball would want to break the sub, but it doesn't end up breaking the sub. And so now I just have Keldeo behind his sub, and I'm starting to uh, feel good about my position here. Uh, it's I still don't do, deal with this, with this interaction terribly well, but um, it's going to come down to a few 50-50s, and this is going to allow me to outstall his, uh, this, this toxic damage. So... If I have to give up my Keldeo for HP on this Slow King, then honestly, I'm kind of feeling okay about this interaction. But he does switch out, get the regeneration, get the regenerator back. And this was, a again, another huge, huge 50-50 because I thought that he would want to switch out in this situation. He, or at the, at the very least, he wouldn't want to give up his Slow King this early. So I get a sub off, which uh, does allow me to take out this Electabuzz that he was trying to sack off anyway. But it allows me to take it off and remain behind a sub. So overall, this is probably the best position that I could have had in general. And uh, it all kind of fell for naught because, again, this is going to uh, invite in the Slow King. But it's, again, going to put me in a, in a position where I can kind of um, stall the Slow King out a little bit. And force it to take uh, some poison damage here. And... It's just going to be a strange interaction where uh, I, I'm kind of forced to sub up if I want to try to 1v1 this Slow King. And I'm going to come out of this interaction, you know, decently well. This Slow King is such a huge, huge problem for my team in general that um, I kind of felt like I had to um, give up that much HP on my Keldeo. But ultimately, it's what I felt like I had to do. But now what this allows me to do is give up my Noivern here for um his attack to fizzle and it's going to give me a very free turn of toxic and when i saw how low he was due to toxic my honest thinking was hey 
I can bring in a Krozma and I can attempt to try to use this as a little bit of setup fodder. So now I can get a Calm Mind up here. And I'm starting to, you know, play this out in my head. I'm starting to think, can Necrozma potentially win this match from here? Um, if I can set up enough Calm Minds, he doesn't really have anything on his team that can really, you know, do massive, massive damage, especially after I get a couple Calm Minds up. And he already had to burn Fly Z on um, my Serena earlier in the match. So potentially, uh, just getting a couple Calm Minds up and I get burned so I can't be toxic to or anything else in this matchup means that Necrozma potentially has a chance to bail me out in this in this interaction um i'm gonna have an okay um i'm gonna have an okay matchup against the mammoth swine i'm gonna have a not great but again okay matchup against the drapion um this thing i can is potential you know set up fodder and uh a tornadus i'm pretty i'm pretty confident that i can 1v1 uh so from here on out it's going to be a matter of you know, trying to play out this, these interactions well enough where I can potentially win. The Drapion comes in, and I am kind of scared that I that I might have accidentally left myself in range of knockoff. So, again, super duper scary moment here. But I see that it does right around 100 points of HP. So, it looks like I can Moonlight up on this thing and um, net myself some health uh, after, after um, he knocks off my item. So, now... Despite the burn with the prism armor, I'm going to be able to net some HP every time I moonlight up. And if I can somehow end up with uh, just netting myself more and more HP every time I click moonlight, then maybe that'll leave me with enough HP to kind of 1v1 the Mammoth Swine. And that's going to be super duper dubious uh, no matter what I do. But it felt like what I was forced to do in this kind of interaction, if I, if I wanted... Any, if I wanted any chance of winning this interaction, it was going to be with this Necrozma. And, uh, I, I just put myself in such a bad position. I, I put myself in a couple different holes throughout this matchup. Where, um, if Necrozma didn't kind of bail me out here, then I don't know what I would do, right? So, ultimately, I'm kind of forced in a position where I kind of just have to Moonlight. And he has to let me Moonlight, because if he, if he switches out into something, that would be really bad, and he just has to continue to click knockoff because it's obviously going to be his strongest move against me. Um, and that's going to be how it goes for a few turns. I know that I burn like five or six moonlights in this entire interaction, so I know this goes on for quite a bit. But I think we're right around the the, the area where I know I'm not going to get much healthier. Honestly, I probably I probably should have gone for one moonlight more than more than I did, it probably would have left me in an absolute optimal position, but, uh, honestly, I, I got a little impatient, to be fair, and, and, uh, I kind of just miscounted turns a little bit, but I could have ended up maybe a little bit, uh, healthier in, in this interaction, and honestly, if I did end up dropping to a life for Mammoth Swine, then, you know, I, I would have lost it no matter what, so, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. But I end up doing some calcs, right? And um, I take most adamant mam mammoth swines, earthquakes. Uh, if it's life orbed, then it's like a 50 50. Or no, I, th I think if it's life orbed, then I never take it. And if it's or like earth plague, then I take it like 50% of the time or something to that effect. But uh, he ends up being scarfed. I found out after the match that he's scarfed. So I take the earthquake, I get off the photon geyser. And that is a huge, huge threat out of the way. But now, I'm kind of thinking, well, I kind of just lose to this thing, right? And I don't really know what I can do because my Spirit Tomb is max physical defense to kind of deal with his um, Mammoth Swine. Um, the way that my Spirit Tomb is built, I think it takes, um, I think from full, it takes two er Earthquakes, like Max Attack, Adamant, Earthquakes. Um, but it's not really built to take special hits. So my Spirit Tomb is in here kind of just to go down i fully expected that i that the best that, that i could hope to do is to take it down to a 1-0 and uh that he was going to win this matchup right so i try to do what i can i get a toxic off on this tornadoes here and now i'm starting to think is this possible like can i actually stall out enough turns where uh i could do something here because now now i'm in a position where now i have a potential win con in him missing hurricanes right but he ends up clicking heat, heat Wave, and I get to see how much damage this does. We actually end up taking the Heat Wave. 
And I got a little bit of chip through Dark Pulse. And now I'm in a position where I'm like, wow, he's he he has to land. He has to potentially land a bunch of um he uh, earthquakes, hurricanes in order to potentially beat me. But if he's going to either click Heat Wave or Sludge Wave, then I can potentially ticket it with Keldeo and switch back in his Spirit Tomb. So I uh, make that switch. He clicks Sludge Wave, uh, which I end up taking on seven HP. And at this point, through toxic damage, I'm one turn away from winning. And I have two mods left, so uh, at this point, it, it didn't even really matter. I could have um, gave up the Keldeo and and uh, given Spear Tomb like the better stat cheat uh, in the end. But I go down to rocks on the switch in. He clicks Sludge Wave, it fizzles out, and that Toxic is going to give us the win in the end. Um, that end game it happened nowhere near the way that I would have thought that it would have, but we somehow ended up winning the match. I don't know how it happened. I think uh, he for sure outplayed us. I think I, I think our prep matched up decently well. I think um, I probably should have be had better answers to the uh, Tornadoes, but it came down to a couple 50-50s, right? So the fact that my Toxic Camera and a uh, sub Keldeo was able to, to kind of work together and deal with the Slow King, that helped out a ton. The fact that Spear Tomb was able to take a, a few hits despite being max physical defense um, kind of bailed me out a little bit, but also just the way that my team worked in general uh, just kind of bailed me out in this situation. And uh, I made some really bad plays. Like, like I really don't like the way that I play around with my Noivern. I got really way too cute with my Noivern thinking that, that I could catch him on a few switches here and there. And uh, there was a huge 50-50, which I'm not going to beat myself too, too much about because um, I think, I think honestly, U-turn in that situation was as good as as good of a play as him going for the Fly Z would have been. Um, it would have gotten rocks off the field and it would have made the end game a whole lot different. But um, at that point, I, I think that's a true 50-50. I think either play is equally good in that situation. It's just a matter of like what we ended up doing. However, uh, if I did get rocks off the field, then uh, that would have meant that his torn kept the fly Z for the end of the match, and that probably would have been the uh, deciding factor in the end game of this match. So, who knows how things would have turned out? But uh, yeah, that's going to be week three. It is in an absolute insane week three. I got really lucky with uh, some crit. That crit Inferno Overdrive was absolutely humongous, and a couple of I'm pretty positive just low rolls just straight up low rolls on my uh spirit tomb i believe and my keldeo both just kind of taking sludge waves with very uh minimal hp just being able to take those hits i think uh well obviously it was 100 percent the difference in the match but uh that just was a bunch of luck also going my way um but regardless that's going to be week three thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the ubl um the last few weeks the icba and uh a league war that's coming up and uh just other stuff in general but with that once again thank you guys so much for watching and i'll be once again out